guys. Welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. We hope you had a great holiday season filled with many, many drinks. I'm Julie Stewart Binks, of course, and I'm so excited today to have a guest who is not only one with an illustrious career in hockey and television broadcasting, but also one of my friends, good old Canadian boy from Scarborough. We got Mike Johnson sitting on the couch with us here today. Mike, I've been trying to get you on the show since the beginning of time, mm -hmm. and finally was able to get you we know you've been all over north america because yep. you live in canada you live in toronto yep. but you work in the u.s and in canada as well but then you travel around doing games how's it going what's going on with you um things are good i enjoy the <laughs> nice introduction I feel good about myself like i've done something with either career that i've chose to do which is probably a bit of a stretch but um no things are good holidays were good uh i had knee surgery a couple weeks oh, ago wow. so i okay. didn't really do much during the holidays i basically lied there on the couch with ice on my knee and just is that like sat a there common for a thing weeks. for some of the guys that have been retired like the knees the hips I, I think so although i don't know if mine was even hockey related like I, there was no moment where i hurt myself i just started having a fat knee and i'm like and how's it feeling on. it's pretty good like yeah no it's i can't quite do stuff yet yeah i have to wait till february i think then i can kind of go but okay. so i did, so holidays were different because i didn't do anything i just sat there and that's like convalesce. all of us we yes. also did nothing yeah. for but i had a good excuse so i'm like period. can't get up guys can't get up yeah and it is kind of funny mike actually lives right near where my mom lives in mm -hmm. toronto so you've like see you've been like jogging when you saw like my mom yeah. walking our dog and so that's what's like in canada like <laughs> everyone just like lives beside one another so when you say hey do you know joe <laughs> from canada i'm like yeah yeah I you know, do you know julie's mom from canada i do yes i actually yeah. do know julie's mom from canada um yeah so we have uh, lots in common mike's daughters go to my old high school none of this stuff i'm sure is interesting to everyone except for my mom who's watching right now so <laughs> and my parents as well shout out yeah there and you your parents are like too. yay um yeah but we're excited to have you here today there's a lot going on in the nhl mm -hmm. and especially for you know someone with your background and for those of you who don't know mike's played on the leafs the lightning them all? the pan no the coyotes the habs and uh the blues oh well when there's five teams it's i it's did not my research easy. on my it's friends it's not that easy well done um and so but you have an interesting background on how you got sure. started in the league because you went to bowling green mm -hmm. and which pam duckworth the head of our network also went to that college as well all the greats all the sure, greats go there sure. and so you were playing hockey there and then then in your senior year you you were passed over in the NHL draft twice, correct? I was, correct. Thank was you for that? bringing that up. What was nice that like? Uh, you know what? It was fine because I didn't have great high aspirations to play. I was I was extraordinarily late to puberty. Like, I'm still kind of going through it. So um, when the years when you could get drafted to play junior in Canada, I was like five foot two, mm -hmm. literally, in grade nine and ten. I was just the smallest kid in my school. Uh, so I tried to get a scholarship only to go to school. I had not one aspiration to play professional hockey uh, my sister had a soccer scholarship down in florida so i'm like my sister can do it i should be able to do it so i tried to get a scholarship i was fortunate enough to get one uh, down at bg um after my freshman year i think i was draft eligible the second time and my coach said you know what maybe some teams have asked you about you you might want to go i'm like i'm not gonna go what are you crazy am i gonna sit there for eight hours and get drafted in the seventh round so i just and back then no internet i just went about my day i never got a call so um i wasn't even disappointed I, it didn't matter because i wasn't gonna play pro pro hockey anyway so um yeah so it was fine i wasn't i wasn't that upset about it the only time was after my second year they had something called a supplemental draft right. at that point i had a good year i for sure would have been taken in that and that was for guys who had not been taken in either one of the couple draft years and they canceled it because the lockout in 94. Oh. And all I wanted was like a cap, a jersey, and a bag. I wouldn't even care about like, playing. They're like, give me something, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, picture, whatever. You know, uh, so they canceled it. But it turned out to be the best thing for me because when I finally did end up going pro, I was able to be a free agent, pick my spot, right. get way more money than I otherwise it's would. So, um, but it wasn't disappointing. It's unusual, but it wasn't. It wasn't something I aspired to do. So I didn't. I didn't really worry about it. Well, I'm sure that perspective helps you now as being a TV analyst and discussing the draft and talking with young kids. And before we get into all of that, mm -hmm. as something that you learned while before you got into the league, and then in, it, it really that skill got so strong in the league was drinking. And so <laughs> that is something that we do on the show. Right. Obviously. And so today, Mike, what do we have in front of us that we're going to drink? Okay, so I have a sweet tooth when it comes to all beverages. I don't like carbonation. 
so I'm somewhat you know, limited. I, I've seen you drink vodka sodas before. Yeah, but that's yeah that's later different. at night. Okay, but I don't okay, have yeah, Coca-Cola. Yeah. I don't have yeah. yeah. I don't drink carbonated drinks. I just don't like them. Um, and then I don't like anything that is you know like rye or scotch mm -hmm. or whiskey or any of that stuff none of this yeah is it's like, all it's, it's, it's gorgeously interest, displayed okay. but i'm like i don't want any of that that's right. no good for me that's, so that's a good sign so i went with uh lemonade perfect i love Old lemonade sweets we squeezed the lemon freshly here. squeezed lemonade lots of sugar yes some vodka and i'm a happy camper you can have it any well, time of the year there's no vodka in here right now let's just be so, honest are we, are we like, full disclosure full disclosure yeah all i don't right. want you to get in trouble cheers yeah, I, I, yeah, sure. <laughs> Good to see you. Cheers. Good to see you, good yes. buddy, old pal. All right. Let's sip on some good old-fashioned lemonade. Oh, well, that's good, though. Because you can't, if you order it down south and it's not sweetened, it's no good. Like, yeah. I can't add aftermarket sugar to a lemonade. And that's what I've noticed a lot of Americans are used to is unsweetened yeah. iced tea. Iced tea, I, iced tea was the other option we could have brought yeah, in yeah. here, yes. But in Canada, iced tea is already sweet, yes. right? You notice that? I, and here, I know, yes. It's not. I, Big difference. It's, it's wild. Here it's just I'm cold tea. Fan. Yeah, it's cold tea. It's like, so and this good. we're in diabetes capital of the world. You'd think that <laughs> it would be the other way around. Um, anyways, we've got. We are gonna drink our drinks anywhere in the world, Mike. And mm -hmm. where have you chosen us to go today? Okay, so I thought we could either do one of two places back in Toronto, where we would be very comfortable because um, you know we're both That's from that one point in our time. lives. Yeah. Uh, or a beach. I don't go away very often. I don't do vacations very often. Yeah. I'm just oh, busy. Looks like we picked a but beach. But I like a good beach. Oh, I can yeah. sit there and rot. Give me a book and a pina colada. A couple of sweet, sweet drinks. I am set for and the day. Already got, and, yes. does it, and lots and lots of sunscreen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are, we are against, yes. against uh, skin cancer here on Drinks with Vinks. Is Where's, there anywhere that's not against skin <laughs> cancer? <laughs> we are an anti-skin okay, cancer good. show, good. just so everyone's clear. Where Whereabouts are we here? Do you know? Bali. Uh, that looks Bali. like Bali. That looks like Bali. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's where I would have picked things. anyways, because then they could put the little those little huts out on the stilts in the those middle of the look ocean. Amazing. I've never been, but it's I'm like, going there now. I feel like yeah. I'm transporting myself. It's like the Maldives myself. too have that yes, as Maldives, well, and yeah. you. I always it just looks so yes. perfect to go there, but then I'm sure, like it'd be weird to be sleeping out there at night. I mean, it's a lot of weird things. things as long as it's happen. not moving. Like as long as yeah. the stilts are solid. As long as you don't wake up in the middle of the night in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> it's a bit of a leap of faith. Yeah, you sleep with your yeah. life jacket on. I know. All right. Yeah. Well, speaking of sleeping with your life jacket on, it is 2020. And do you have any resolutions you want to toast to? Hmm. I'm not a big resolution guy. Okay. Um, probably because I, I'm of the mindset if, listen, I'm not Anthony Ross. But like, <laughs> if you want to do something in your life, if you want to get better, if you want to improve, if you want to go back to school, you want to do something different, just do it. Like you don't have to wait for the calendar. Do it in March. Do it in August. Whenever it, whenever it piques your interest. So I'm not, um, I'm not a big resolution guy. I mean, that's I resolved to get into shape again because, yeah. with my knee, I've kind of been laid up for about three months, and I'm marginally active when I can be. So, um, but that's just more. I do that all the time once I can get healthy. Yeah, I think the resolutions are now just like. Okay, get healthy because we've been just bags of shit all Christmas, just shoveling garbage into our bodies. No, anyone else? No. Okay. Yeah, is that, yeah. that, like so, is that? Well, you're much younger than I am, but like, I mean, you eat a lot at Christmas time. Yeah. Lots and lots of meals all the time, and I guess you can drink a lot at Christmas time too because lots of social activities. Ah man, we all miss the holidays. So it's it's right dry now. January, right? No, no. Yeah, I guess people are doing that, but like, I've never been a, a fan of going cold turkey on something. <laughs> I'll wean yourself it. off slowly. I'll do it during the week like don't drink okay. and then weekend just go banana sandwich and then hate myself so much not drink all week again and then be like i need to drink so much mm. seems like a cycle that repeats itself it's a good it's just you know it's been working for me and i don't feel whatever like works yeah it. exactly hashtag alcoholism all right and on that note we got to take our first time out on the program but when we come back more about mike's career here on drinks with thanks Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We've got Mike Johnson, former NHL hockey player, currently with the NHL Network, TSN, NBC Sports. We're just saying that your schedule is all over the place. You, you forgot SiriusXM Radio. SiriusXM Radio. Oh my gosh. I mean, 
Yeah, because you're, all, the you're bases. all over the place. And I want to, though, go back into your career before we, uh, your mm -hmm. playing career before we go into your broadcasting career. And on the heels of you discussing not getting drafted, but then being able to sign a free agent contract, you did in your senior year yes. at Bowling Green. And uh, our one of our producers, JB, told me how you were, you, you went away from school played mm -hmm. came back and people were like where'd you go buddy yeah like what yeah. was that like <laughs> it, it was a it was a whirlwind so i knew i was turning pro after my senior season finished but i thought and i kind of knew what teams i was going to go to and you kind of get a sense so my senior senior season finished on friday and i thought i would probably sign monday so i went out friday night had a post career kind of night as you would in college with all my buddies i've been with for four years i got home late like six in the morning crawled into bed my phone rang at like 7 30. it was my agent saying okay toronto wants to sign you now wow. like what <laughs> now what are you talking about he's like yeah so uh go back to bed and we'll sort of, i'm like go back to bed i mean but you want me to fly to tampa today so i i literally went bowling green friday night woke up dragged myself to the airport in detroit flew down to tampa on saturday played sunday Went back to t Detroit, back to Bowling Green, drove up to Toronto, and played the rest of the month. Played like 13 games, I think, for the Leafs that year to end the year. Finished on Saturday night, last night of the regular season. We missed the playoffs. Had another night, year-end night for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Drove back to Bowling Green on Sunday. I show back in class, and it had been five weeks at that point since I left. And I sit down beside the guy, whoever, obviously not a good friend, but the guy who sat beside <laughs> me in class, and he's like, whoa, that is a serious senior slide you're on. I'm, I'm like, um, yeah, yeah, you know what? Just these things happen. Had no idea. You're not like, buddy, I've been playing for the Toronto Maple yeah. Leafs. So it was great, right? though. I went back. I went back to school for three weeks and graduated on time, took my finals. And although I didn't even know, because when I turned pro in my contract, it said at the end of the NHL season, you have to go play in the minors. Mm. So I'm like, OK, trying to sort out. I was taking four classes to graduate, trying to sort out. Can I take them by proxy and whatever, write assignments or exams, whatever I had to do. And I read in the paper, Toronto Maple Leafs are not going to send Mike Johnson to the minors. He's going to be able to go back to school. So I called my agent. I'm like, hey, hey, Pat, what's up? Is this true? Am I, do I have to go to the minors or not? He's like, oh, yeah, I didn't want to bother you. I'm like, didn't bother me with this information. You probably should have told it to me. So it was great. I was, I was not the most popular that Sunday because there was about nine guys going to the minors mm. and one guy going back to school. So I was like the little college kid getting going back to school. Well, I want good though. That I mean, that's a very interesting dynamic of like getting up to the show, then going back, uh, just to track back a bit. What was sort of, I guess, the biggest change when you did get a, a call to the show? Um, everyone, you know, it's obviously everyone was better, but like you go from a place in college where I was bigger and stronger and better than everyone to a place where you're not. Um, I didn't think it was like too fast for me or, you know, too physical for me. It was just, just, you're used to being good to be, now you're just okay. You're just kind of like one of many. So I find that was the biggest change. I mean, beyond the lifestyle and getting right, paid yeah. and all the rest of it. But, um, as far as the actual hockey, it was more, it just got harder because when you're good, the games are pretty fun. Mm -hmm. You have the puck all the time. You score goals all the time. You feel good all the time and you get in the NHL. And unless you're one of the very rare ones who are incredibly good right away it's a grind mm -hmm. it's just hard on you mentally as much as it is physically so i found that the biggest challenge and the biggest difference was just it gets it's a grind every day you're trying to did i score did i play well right, yeah. who's getting traded like all oh, that whole business side of it just weighs on you all the time so that was that was the biggest change for me yeah i want to talk to you about some of that kind of stuff like because you had been traded in your career and especially guys now finding out you mentioned reading the newspaper which yeah. sounds so archaic What's that? Yeah. <laughs> with guys now seeing on twitter like that they've gotten traded or mm -hmm. like you know an instagram post or right. something like that because it is such a weird dynamic that like in professional sports that would it's almost at the back of your mind all the is it always all the it's, time? you know what you i was so comfortably oblivious my first couple of years like i didn't get the trade deadline which is coming up in a in six seven weeks here and how you should be on edge and who knows what's happening and i'm like oh i'll never get traded to time when i'm from toronto i'm playing yeah. for toronto i'm a good player like it'll never happen and guys would joke oh we survived another deadline and i'm like i had no idea what they were talking about and none of it made sense until you get traded the first time right. and then everything about playing pro sports changes everything i remember my first time i got traded it's in there toronto we're about to play a game i usually don't answer my phone when i'm having a nap and i'm a 
great napper. So I was like mm. shutting down for three hours and the phone rang and I answer it. It's like Pat Quinn, my coach in Toronto, a Hall of Fame coach. He's like, hey, Mike, th this is verbatim. Hey, Mike. Hey, Pat. We made a trade. It's involving you. To get a good player, you got to give, give up a good player. So we wish you a lot of luck. Um, somebody from Tampa will call you shortly. Thanks a lot. I was like 18 seconds. It was that fast. And, then, and he wasn't being dismissive, but that's all he had to say. Hey. And I hung up the phone, and all I could think of was, what team did he say? Yeah. I could not for the life of me remember. I'm like, okay. is that Boston? Where am I going? So I sat there for like 45 minutes. I called my parents, called my sister, called my agent, and nobody was available. I just sat oh there. Gosh. Like just hanging out. just changed. And about 45 minutes, someone from Tampa called me. Okay. And then I got Ah, to, that's the team. Yes. So. And it's not like you can barter with Pat Quinn and say like, no, no, a boss. A bad call. Like, Why would you do that? Yeah. No, no, you, no. You're just kind of out you go. And then and then you want to leave the city. And then I was stuck in Toronto. I was waiting for my visa to get to the States mm. and everything else. So, But from that point on, it was never lost on me that's a business. It was mm. never lost that teams will like you so long as you're good for them. As right. soon as you're no longer good for them, all that loyalty that they want from you, they will not reciprocate. And I don't blame them for it, but let's not kid ourselves that it's, you know, it's romantic, you know, they want you to do well and they're invested in you. Well, they do because it's good for them, not so much because it's good for you. Exactly. And, and it's not a reflection on it's not, how I'm you not, are as a player because you could be well, obviously super talented. The way I look at it, every bait. time you get traded, that means somebody else wants you. Yes. Right? Somebody Ooh. doesn't want you, but somebody does. It's like dating, right? It's like... That's right. Every breakup like, is a new opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Exactly. Uh, this is awesome stuff. Okay. Uh, I do want to get into the fact that, like, you said you basically gave up on the idea of having a pro career. Sure. Or didn't have that idea that you're going to have a pro Both, career. Yeah, yeah. And then you end up signing with your hometown team. Mm -hmm. Like, what was sort of the, the arc in your mind right. of realizing, like, wow, maybe I can make this dream happen. Okay, so like every little kid in Canada, I wanted to be a professional hockey player. And I was really good till about 10 or 11, then I didn't grow. And in high school, ninth grade, 10th grade, I didn't play hockey. I played basketball every day. Strangely, though, I was short, but that was my favorite sport. That's what I wanted <laughs> to do. You play now, like you're very tall. Yeah, 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 I still play basketball now. I got a lot better. Anyway, so I didn't play hockey ninth and 10th grade, 11th and 12th. I played a little bit, but not at the highest level of hockey. And then in Ontario back then, you had to go to 13th grade. Right, yeah to go to university grade at Canadian 13, University, grade 13, as we call it. Canada. Um, and so I did that, tried to get a scholarship. I got one and I was just trying to get a degree. No big deal. First year went fine. Second year went a bit better. Third year, I broke my wrist. I didn't play very much. And then fourth year, I did amazing. Like I just had a fantastic year and kind of about halfway through that fourth year, I realized I'll be able to play. It started like I probably will be able to play pro somewhere like minor leagues to Maybe I'll be able to play in the best minor league to maybe I could play in the NHL to I for sure will get a chance all in the span of about four months interviewing agents, trying to figure out where to go, looking at NHL teams, where can you sign, who's going to give you the most money, who's going to give you the best contract, all those different things. And it happened kind of that quickly. Like even after my third year, I would have said, well, maybe I'll play in the minors for a year. Maybe I'll go play in Europe for a year. But I got a degree in finance. I want to work in finance. Like that's where I was 100% committed to going with my life. Right. And it really wasn't until my fourth year, my senior season, where um, kind of by maybe January, I kind of knew. Right. Which made my last semester at school really nice because I'm like, ah, class. Uh, I'm yeah, not like, quite as buckled down as I had to had be. had the degree. You're like... I was going to graduate. I had good marks already, but I was going to walk out. And I knew at that point I was going to get to sign for whatever lots of yeah. money you know and you know not by other sports standards a lot of money but it was close to a million dollars so at that point it was, it was pretty good things were looking up mike yeah. johnson and the fact that you have a degree and now that comes in handy because so many guys who ended up being studs in junior or right out of the gate don't have degrees and you got a degree and i've never <laughs> but i've never used it though that's the problem i got a degree in well, finance well you can say you got a degree in finance yes if i ever had to go get a job i imagine i would be able to get one yeah hey you never know right your career on tv could end tomorrow and <laughs> right you after come this work, yeah. <laughs> come work for us on drinks with Pinks. speaking of which we got to take a time out more on nhl news and notes with mike johnson next
Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We got Mike Johnson, former NHL hockey player, currently with the NHL Network, NBC Sports, Sirius XM, and TSN Sports. I feel like I need a better wow. nickname. Like you're JSB, it seems all hip. You're and... Johnny. Johnny. I know. That's what he, that's his I like know. hockey name. You know. I know. Hockey players are the worst. The worst for nicknames. I know, but it's just the easy thing. Like I'm Binksy. They're Binksy. That's. It's your last name. Smitty. Of the yeah. Donor. Like uh, what, what, what would you want to be? Something more creative. The one I like, uh, Ryan O'Reilly, who won the Conn Smythe with St. Louis last year, they call him Factor because Bill O'Reilly had a show called X Factor. That's awesome. X Factor was like, whatever, it's the, the Riley Factor. Riley Factor, yeah. yeah. So he's the O'Reilly that's Factor. That's good. I, that's, that's Not because he's creative. conservative, but I'm like, yeah, so everyone called him Factor. It's amazing. First, I thought you were going to say, it's like, they call him Factor because, like, he factors in. Well, see, that's so a double entendre, plays. and that's why it works <laughs> I'm like, well. Like, that's why I'm. But I like that, yeah. the Bill O'Reilly so one. You think of one creative like that. Okay, so I just have one quick follow up with you mentioned the Leafs. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a Toronto sports fan. I remember you playing for the Leafs. I just got to ask, like, how could you even describe what it's like playing for the Leafs, mm -hmm. which are a very highly appreciated and also highly hated team right. across the league? It's a New England kid playing for the Patriots. It's a New York kid playing for the Yankees. It's a Texas kid playing for the Cowboys. It's that cachet. Different sport, maybe a different scale, but it's the same. It is the most popular and the most vilified team in the league. And it's fun. It's amazing. Like You go on the road anywhere in the entire league, but especially across Canada, and 30%, 40% of the stands are full of Leaf jerseys. And they're chanting and, um, you know, people – know who you are and pay a lot of attention to what you're doing which as a young person turning pro i was like happy to have people know who i was that was pretty cool and i was from there my parents got to experience the whole thing my family and friends from high school were right into it so um yeah we tried to cash in as much as i could on any like marginal celebrity i had from being with the leafs but it's it's pretty cool i grew up when i was nine years old i played for a minor hockey organization that was affiliated with the junior team that played in Maple Leaf Gardens. As a nine-year-old, I had moments with my dad in the stands, me skating around at 6.30 in the morning in the darkness of Maple Leaf Gardens. And it was, you know, 14 years later, I'm playing a game there mm -hmm. with my dad. And, all my, you know, yeah, it, like when great. you think about it reflectively like that, it was, a, it was a pretty unique situation for me. That's not why I chose Toronto. Not because I love them, not because I love the city, because they were terrible. And they needed a right winger, so I'm sure. I fit that bill. None of that skating around with your dad. You it know, really didn't. It wasn't the. Like, I, no? I no, no. If you if I could have played like in Chicago Stadium for the Bulls, like I would have got romantic about that. Like that's what I wanted to do. I want to be a basketball player. Play with Jordan. You did okay. So then, yeah, like that was where my that was passion your, was. That was your dream. You want to be a basketball player? Yeah. So when did that dream um, falter? When I guess when I went to school. Well, I mean, I probably realized I was okay at basketball. I was like an all-star in the city and stuff. And I had like college letters from division 14 schools, not good schools, but you know, way yeah. down the way. Uh, but I was better at hockey straight up. I was just, just, like one I was of just those better things. at hockey. That's too bad. As yeah. I said, you're really tall now. I'm not really Your tall by basketball. He's kind of busted up. So <laughs> like if Steve Nash could make it as a Canadian. As a yeah, now he's a soccer player, kind of, in a way. Yeah, you, who athletic. knows? Who knows? We'll never know the Mike Johnson on... Yeah, no, uh, I know. It that wasn't that good. But, uh, uh, yeah. is, was there any kind of cool celebrity moment that you can remember that you got based on being a Toronto Maple Leaf? Um... A very Canadian band, you would know them, the Tragically Hip. Oh, famous, hip famous Canadian guys. band. You can Google their music, they're great. Um, so they sing songs about a lot of Canadian things, including one about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and there's a lyric in their song, last goal he ever scored, 50 one. 50 Mission, Mission Cap, Cap is the name of the song. So great we were at a concert, a hip concert, at the Air Canada Centre, which is where the Leafs play. And he was singing it, and we got to go down and meet him before the, the concert. Gord Downey. Gord Downey, yeah. the whole band, all of them. And then we went up to our little box to watch, and when he sang that song, the house lights came on and flashed to our box, and the crowd all turned and cheered for us, which was like, that's pretty good. I was like, as a Canadian kid, the hip, the Leafs, it was like, oh, like, wrapping yourself yeah. in the Canadian flag, which was a really neat one. Um, I, yeah, I certainly that enjoyed that. Um, I don't know about Toronto too many other times. Um, yeah. Had there been social media then, like there it is probably now, would've... maybe you would have had Justin Bieber reaching out to play hockey with you? You could probably play hockey with Biebs. Like, I've seen I've you tried. out there. And yeah, I hope you haven't there. seen me out there. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm more of a third line kind of yeah. grinder. I'm an energy line kind of gal. I'm a real glue guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like Jason Priestley was a big star. We met him several times, kind of huh. different events. And um, 
Yeah. So, you know, whatever, whoever was a topical kind of Canadian star, we, we, we probably bumped into it at some point or another. Yeah. Drake ever, do you think you'd get out there? I have met Drake a couple of times. You have? Yeah. What? You never told yeah. me this? I met him when I was playing with the Leafs when he was just like, I think he was Degrassi still yeah. then or whatever before that. Um, at some, I, I like to go to the clubs and like whatever when I was younger, not just the, the watering hole, but actually with music and everything else. So I uh, bumped him into one of those places and he was great. He was very nice because he, he was then because he was he wasn't as big of a star as he is now. He was like he thought it was neat that there were Toronto Maple Leafs around. Mm -hmm. um, then I met him at the All-Star Game in Ottawa. At that point, he was a much bigger star, but not not what he is now. Okay. And he was still pretty good. Yeah. And then uh, I met him one more time I mean, a couple of years ago where he was a mega star. I didn't meet him. Like, we kind of crossed paths. I didn't, yeah. I barely talked to him. But, um, and he was at that point just on a whole nother level where you can't even. Yeah. He, I mean, he's, he's for people in Canada, just, he's a legend. People in Canada, he's people all Well, everyone the gives world. him. Yeah crap because of him in the playoffs last year kind of trolling the warriors with the raptors and uh, i you know what like i gotta tell you so as a toronto raptor fan or Tor I, i'm like oh, okay that's kind of funny as an athlete i would lose my sh over that guy i would get him like i don't care if you're an ambassador you sit the down and you don't get on the court you don't get near me you don't talk to me like, i know basketball is different so the interchange you know spike lee and reggie yeah. miller all of it but, you know, he's out on the court dancing around. I would have walked by. I would have bumped into him. I'm like, that guy's out of here. You can't be on the court bumping into people. Nope. Even if you were I don't like, care. this I would, is I don't give a, I Elton don't care who John it is. coming to a it Leafs is. game and you're like, but it's Mike Myers and you'd bump Mike Myers or something like that. If he was on, if he, if he was on the court, yeah, get out of my way. Absolutely. I, I would I would have lost it. And even though the, you know, a lot of the basketball players know him and they seem kind of friendly or whatever, I would watch that and I'm like, no, I would get him kicked out. It's odd because he, he, he inserts himself into yeah. a, a situation that's not his. Like, you're not a player. You might be Drake. You might be able to go everywhere Well, Spike Lee does the, the same thing. Yeah. He did the same thing, right? I mean, it's not, it's, he's not the only one to have done that. But I know as an athlete, when I'm that intense in the moment, mm -hmm. I would have, like, barreled through him, like, get this guy out of here. Yeah, well, that is that old Canadian hockey spirit you got. You ought to drop the, <laughs> drop the old mitts with Drake, and you probably would have won. I'm, uh, I'm not sure. He's pretty strong. He's pretty muscular now. Didn't you get like 58 penalty minutes in like 28 games in Germany? Oh, in Germany. I was a goon. I've Germany. done my yeah, Wikipedia yeah, exactly. research on you. I had a few fights. None of them went well. <laughs> not my forte. Yes. Uh, uh, same with me. Uh, I haven't done so well in my fights either. Try. Not the face. Try really hard. Face, I know. Yeah. Um, all right. We got to take a quick time out. We'll be back with more fun stuff. Drinks and things. Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Binks. We got Mike Johnson, former NHL hockey player and currently an analyst on NHL Network, TSN Sports, NBC Sports, and Sirius XM. Lots of paychecks coming in to this guy over here. Evidently not enough because you have so many jobs. Right. <laughs> He's really, joking. He's uh, <laughs> I won't have to work for four people. Um, uh, quickly, uh, no. Uh, is it a good enough story? What's that? The Derulo one? Yeah, no, it's I, we were joking about. We were just, you know, you, you know, Jason Derulo and I have a long-standing battle with one another, and mm -hmm. so uh, he's my Newman. And what right. do you got? With so him? Uh, there must be it. So one time I was out in L.A. and uh, Jamie McLennan, uh, who noodles, noodles, also the guy who works for hockey, player. but so he's very good friends with Nickelback. Yes. And he's always showing pictures of them at the concert. So one time we're out in L.A. and they were out there recording or doing something. So. He's like, do you want to come out and hang out for the night with them? I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Let's see what that's like. So we went out to this house they were renting, wherever it was in the Holiday Hill, Hall, Hollywood Hills. And I walk, came out of the house. And I'm like, this place looks familiar. Like this house. I don't know why. What do I know about Hollywood? Anything. And like, it was the house that was used in the Jason Derulo video. Oh. Had like a pool in it and space, like all weirdly modern shaped. I think the Talk Dirty to Me video or whatever. I don't know, whatever it was. So that's my Derulo story. I didn't really actually meet him, but I went and had a night in his video house. That I'm Nickelback sad that you was... didn't meet Jason Derulo. No. But you met Nickelback is also sort yeah. of a... Yeah, and, and despite them being largely hated throughout the world, 
pretty good dudes. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Um, James Wisniewski was going to try to get Chad yeah. Kruger on our yeah. show. Yeah, he was. Yeah, there was. It would be a real fall from grace for him. But uh, <laughs> I'm a big Nickelback fan. Jokes. Okay, let's yeah. move on. <laughs> Speaking of celebrities and big time stars, one you could consider that you played for, mm-hmm. Wayne Gretzky, when he was a coach with the Phoenix Coyotes, mm-hmm. and that was at the time, of course, what you were called. Yes. Not the Arizona Coyotes. As yeah, they you got now. it right. That's right. Yeah. I was like, lay off her. Yeah. Um, what was it now. like? It was amazing. I mean, obviously, I grew up idolizing Wayne Gretzky. He was my he was my guy. He was my hockey guy that I that I aspired to be like. I watched his little Hockey My Way videotape a thousand times mm-hmm. trying to learn how to make a saucer pass. So it was very cool. He'd been around a couple times, like for a couple of years. He'd come on the ice occasionally as a managing partner or owner, whatever his other title was. But when he became the coach, it was it was almost surreal because you know, you're in the middle of my career. I was, I was having my best years as an NHLer then. I was, I was doing quite well. And um, to have Gretz come on the bench and run you through camp and kind of get mad at you and he's yelling at you about something like, it's Wayne Gretzky. Like, it didn't <laughs> even seem real because it was Gretz. Um, so you want to impress him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, even, like, you always want to impress your coach, but there was something more to it that it was him. Like, you did not want to disappoint him because the last thing you want would be, like, your childhood idol to think poorly of you. Did he ever yell at you? Um, yeah, I'm sure he did. I'm sure he muttered under his breath many times. But although one time I was playing and uh, got back to my house after the game and called to Wayne Gretzky, which is pretty cool. Like comes up my phone, yeah. Gretz, his number. And I'm like, Shit, I just got traded. Like, why else would he call me at 1230 at night after a game? There's only one reason. Not to see how my night's going. I got traded. I'm like, that's a shh. Anyway, so, and, but it was not. He was like, he had, his, I think his mom was sick, so he had to take off and spend a couple of days. And he was calling me to say, hey, you're playing really well. You know, like, keep leading the team and be gone for a week or so, but I want to just touch base with the leaders. And I'm like, what a feather in my cap. What a- Even though I resented him because he took the A away from me. Why did you do that? Get him on the show and find out. Oh, what? I had the geez. A. I was quite prideful to wear it. Of course. It was a big deal. Assistant captain, it's called, and you know, you get an A in your jersey. And there's only two of them in the team. And then there was the lockout year, and whatever it was, 04, we missed the whole year. We came back, and then the Gretz became the coach, and he signed a whole bunch of older guys. And his, some of his buddies, Brett Hull came in, Peter Nedved came in, Mike Ricci came in, all longtime established NHLers who at that point were at the end of their careers. But they gave Nedved the A. I'm like, Nedved. <laughs> come on, Pete. I love Pete, but come on. Anyway, so he took it off me and gave it to him and to Reach, Mike Ricci. And so did did he explain to you? No. Just showed up one day, the first just like day. cut off. Like, just like stripped it off. Yeah, no, it just showed up the first day and it wasn't there. So then you got to imagine it's not based on you. It was more just these are my guys. Yeah, but that meant I wasn't one of his guys, <sighs> right? And I'd been on the team. Trouble in paradise. But then he made it all up with a phone call saying that you're playing well. And... So why do you think that he didn't succeed as a coach? Um, the team wasn't very good. I mean, part of it was the team. I mean, so. But even, you know, we didn't have enough team players. Canada, but, like, why do you think he has. The team was really good. Julie, you could coach <laughs> Team Canada. I, I, don't, I mean this respectfully. Oh, I mean, okay. Like, you know, Mike Babcock gets a ton of credit for winning Olympic gold medals. There are 40 coaches, 100 coaches in Canada that could have likely won a gold medal with that team. Yeah. I mean, it, you, you know, you have to know what you're doing, but. So I don't know Wayne Gretzky putting that team together. I don't know if that makes him because a great architect of Gretz teams. Gretzky gets a lot of flack for not being a good coach. Well, I think, like anything, no matter how good of a player you are, coaching is different. There's a reason why people do it for years and years and years before they go to the NHL. So he might be the smartest hockey mind when it comes to playing. There are several elements to a job. Managing lineups, rest, yeah, travel, yeah. in-game um, you know, adjustments, yeah. motivation, interpersonal dynamics, all things that you learn with over time. I only had him for one year, and he was learning on the fly. And he wasn't as good as that, at, the, at it as he needed to be. And from all reports from the guys he did the second year with, he said he was way better the second year. So um, even if he's the greatest player ever, which he is, um, it still takes a little time to figure out what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, well, it sounds bench. like he's a better coach than probably most people give him credit for. Yeah. Well, one thing that was most impressive about Gretz was that he was you could see the passion that made him great because he knew the second he became on the bench, a camera would be on him. An ISO cam would be on him the entire game. We're not going to follow Mike Johnson around playing anymore. We're just going to put it on Wayne Gretzky to see what his reactions might be. And so I think knowing that he would be maybe Mm. reserved or 
mindful of his language or the volume or whatever. Nuh-uh. He was firing both barrels at us, at the refs, at the opponents. And I'm like, I respect that. He's that engaged. He doesn't care that, you know, there's going to be cameras, him swearing and cursing and getting angry and whatever because he was just so into trying to win. So that, uh, I, I always like that about him. And I, I found it interesting. The, he tweeted, I guess, the other day or had a quote about Connor McDavid's filthy oh, goal against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And before we go to break, um, if you're Morgan Riley, who was the defenseman that got embarrassed on that mm. goal, um, how much are you being razzed by your teammates in the league right now? You're well, Connor's done it to a lot of guys, so you're probably not the only one, but you're taking it. Anything bad happens to you, there are very few things in your life that are off limits in the dressing room. That's why it kind of functions well. You don't hide from anything. You don't gloss over everything. A bad thing happens to you, whether whatever it is, you get teased about it. Uh, it's all part of being part of that family. So he's taking it hard, for sure. Yeah. I but, mean, you know, it's Connor McDavid. He does it to everybody. Yeah, again, That's yeah, ridiculous. he is like the he's the new Gretzky in a way, right? He's, he's no, we've never seen anything like him before. We have not. All right, okay. Well, we've never seen anything like this. Stay tuned. Drinks with thanks. What a tease. Hi, I'm Boog Shambi, and I had drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome on back to Drinks with Banks. I am JSB and we are sipping on some old school fresh lemonade with Mike Johnson, former NHL hockey player. I and you're gonna uh, come with gin and juice. We're sipping yeah, on, gin, sipping and on juice. gin and juice. Yeah. Not today. We're not doing dry January, but we're not drinking. Mike's gotta go be on TV I know. after this. Imagine talk. That. I mean, I usually get drunk on this show, so I usually have a couple of drinks and I'm like, I can't throw it a break. Or I don't know where I am. And then I'm like, I really have a problem, I think. But no, I don't I have a show, a show that you drink on and have awesome guests. And Mike, we were talking about coaching and Wayne Gretzky, and that sort of transitions well into some of the bigger stories that have been going on sure, in the course. NHL this year with just um, really no tolerance on abuse in the league and that has you know that has many different um, meanings it's not a, a black and white issue you work at the nhl network we've had your colleagues jackie redman lauren gardner also adnan verk on this exact couch so we understand like the vantage point that you come from as a league partner how have you right. gone about sort of um looking at the issues that have come come to fruition this year um, well, I guess I come at it from a lot of different places. I come at it from a former player who grew up playing hockey, maybe in an era where certainly language was looser, maybe behavior was a bit looser. Um, I look at it as an analyst now who works on covering the game, um, understanding what's going on, understanding the dynamic between coaches and, and, and players. I look at it as a, as a parent. I, mean, I have two daughters that play sports, and they have coaches that interact with them. Um, and you, and you, you know, you're concerned about what they feel and what they think and how that's going for them. So I look at it through all those lenses to try to form my own opinions about it. And I think you said it really well is that there are some things that have come out and it could be in any sport, in any job, in any industry that you know are unacceptable. They're just, you cannot talk like that. You're, there's language, whether it's racial or sexual orientation or religious or anything like that. You know, you can't say anything derogatory in any of those arenas, that is unacceptable. And that's easy. That's an easy one. And I think that's an easy question to answer. Like if a coach says that to a kid in any of those categories, that's it. You can't talk to people like that. Fine. I think there's the other category of physical conduct. You can't punch or hit or th throw or choke or slap any of your employees or your players. That's easy, right? Like that's that, that makes sense. You know that that's, that's unacceptable and that would require you to not have that job anymore. And I think, I think everyone's okay with that. I think where it gets trickier, where it gets interesting and muddied is it's a, it's a very emotional industry. It's not like people always say, well, you know, how come you can yell at somebody in hockey, a coach can yell at a player, but you can't yell at somebody in your accounting department. Not like that. You can't swear at someone. But hockey is an emotional, physical game that requires a reaction immediately. A coach can't take till the next day to sit down, get cooler heads, talk it out, like you would maybe in a normal job. A coach needs a reaction right away. And sometimes that requires you know, a direct, sometimes loud, sometimes brunt, verbal engagement. 
And that affects everyone differently. If I sit there and say, Julie, you were terrible today. You were, you're the worst player I've ever seen. That's harsh, but you may be wounded by that and it may really hurt you and it may really stay with you. You could say it to me, I might think, ah, it was pretty bad. Like it might not bother me at all. And I think that's the areas where all coaches are trying to figure out where that line is. Like you're trying to motivate guys, you're trying to push them, trying to prod them, trying to, trying to find a way to get the most of them. And you know, each player in any sport reacts differently to motivation and to, to language and all that. And, and there's no clean answer there. The obvious stuff's easy. Right. Like you can't do it. So don't. And don't be an idiot by doing it. And we know coaches that have done, you know, the Bill Peters stuff, the language, that is, that's gross. And you, you don't hear that. But, you know, as far as, you know, slapping a guy or kicking a guy in the butt when he's on the bench, like that used to happen. Never right. But um, that doesn't really happen anymore. It's all those other things, you know, stories about Mike Babcock taking advantage of Mitch Marner, asking him to make a list of who the least hard workers on his team was, then sharing it with the team. That's a jerk move, kind of violates his trust, but I don't think that is a fireable offense. I don't consider that abuse of Mitch Marner. It's, it's, it was just dumb, mm -hmm. it was insensitive. But like, it, you know, there is that range that is out there. So that's the conversation. That's the conversation that as a parent I have, as a former player I have, as an analyst, and there is probably no easy answer other than if you're a person in power, coach, GM, whatever, if you would be mortified, embarrassed, or worried if what you did or what you said was repeated, then you probably shouldn't do it. Right. And I think that's probably a, a, a good place to start mm -hmm. a larger conversation. And athletes are different. Professional athletes that play now are younger. They don't. They won't just take you yelling at them. They won't just do what they're told and not why, want to understand why. And I think if you want to be a great coach in any sport, you got to change for the times. So regardless of whether you should, on an ethical stance, do some of these things, on, on, on a job performance stance, you shouldn't do them because it's not going to work. Like yelling and scaring and intimidating people to play better or play harder or whatever, it doesn't work anymore. Right. Kids don't want to hear that noise. To tell me why, tell it to me straight, but explain to me and have a conversation because you'll lose your team. You'll lose your players if you go the other tack. So it's been an interesting time mm -hmm. and an interesting conversation to be had because everyone's got a slightly different take on, on how it all went down. Right. And as you mentioned, a gray area. But you also said some interesting things about back in the day, you know, you'd see some things on the bench, mm. maybe a, a slap or a hit there that wasn't right, but it happened. And the times were different. What did you see? Uh, well, no, I, I, I did not have I, 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 I couldn't tell you about a coach that um, hit someone. I could certainly tell a coach that would like, yell at players, told me that I'm terrible, told me that I'm soft or a wimp or use more inflammatory language than that by saying that absolutely but um you know there was you know mark crawford has been in the news i mean he you know it was known that you know he would kick guys in the butt slap them in the back you know how hard i'm not sure but you know probably hard enough that it it, it left a mark psychologically on the players more so than physically um so i didn't see any of that I mean when I was growing up I mean I probably heard language that you couldn't use certainly right. um, LGBTQ uh, insensitive right, language yeah. for sure was prevalent 15 years ago um, the racial stuff you talk to a player of a, a minority player especially in hockey where the majority of players are, mm -hmm. are, are not um, they heard it growing up and they probably have heard it even in the last 10 years but that doesn't happen nearly as much anymore i stand between the benches when i broadcast games right. i hear the language yeah i hear the chirps i hear when guys are want to punch each other's faces in and it used to go down that road of things you can't say w way more often and it almost never does anymore so there has been some growth there um i don't have any great stories of you know pat quinn like smacking me with a stick or anything like that it just i, I guess i was lucky to have kind of Player, coaches that treated you somewhat normally. Well, that's great because um, we've heard a number of different guys come out saying different things, which is good that these conversations are happening so that changes can be made. Mm -hmm. And you do have that vantage point in between the benches. Yeah. What's it like seeing coaches now, especially after everything's come out? Have you noticed a change? Um, probably not because there wasn't that much to see beforehand. I mean, coaches yell at players still. Absolutely. They get frustrated. They'll scream. They'll swear. But... Um, I mean, I think the game was drifting in that, trending in that direction anyways, where now it's instead of, Johnny, what the f 
you know, it's like they'll walk over with an iPad and say, okay, here's what's going wrong. You can't do that again. Be better. Now, if you do that I four times in a row. I don't that, by the way. Now, well, what? It's like when I was a sideline reporter, I'd hear Randy Carlo being like, get your head out of your f***ing ass. Right. Yeah, but, like, he'll say that, but then he'll come over and explain to you why. Like, what happened? Like, you get, like, that's, that's what, that's how it goes. I mean, certainly there's a lot. Listen, nobody swears more than me around, around the game. I used to swear when I played the entire game at myself. And my line mates and my you have any coach. Good, you have a good chirp that you might have used or like one that a go to? No, I didn't need to. I wouldn't do that. I would just usually call people stupid. Like just like you're, you're actually hey, you're, stupid. You know, like, they'd be like, it would generally be like, I'm soft because I didn't like the fight. And I'm like, but you're dumb and you're terrible. So just shut it. You you kill them with your finance degree. Hey? Well, yes, yeah, right. That my note. quick wits to keep me out of trouble and yeah. I get my face smashed in. Hey. But you were swearing, you said, still, too. So Yeah, lots of... Uh, so looks like a bit of a tough guy out there. Never. You know when you do those promo shots, you've been around the teams. Like, okay, you're doing your, like, okay, look happy. You're like, ah. they're like, look mean. Look at the camera and give you a mean face. I'm like... You could do mean. I got nothing. Do it. Try it now. Do mean. I got nothing. I'm like, I'm looking at myself and I'm embarrassed. Come on, can you do mean? Nah, that's it. That's it. I got no jaw. I got nothing. I can't do it. Mean? Mm. Am I angry or mean? Mm. Okay. I just look like I'm on the toilet. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a little time out from the show. We'll be back with more drinks with Big So Mike Johnson. Bye. Hey guys, we've been having so much fun drinking and binking here with Mike Johnson, and we want to get to so much stuff, we don't have enough time, but we're going to get some mid-season award predictions from a guy who does this probably every single day. So, okay. first question, who do you think is going to win the Hart Trophy? Uh, Connor McDavid. Easy. Yes, correct. Uh, who's going to win the Art Ross? Connor McDavid, also very easy. Yes, correct. Uh, the Selkie. I'm glad that you're agreeing <laughs> with my choices. Like somehow you're the definitive answer on every. Yeah, I guess. create the. Uh, the Selkie. I. That's a better question. Going back to Bergeron, he's healthy this year. Boston's great. He's man. That guy just like machine. never dies. He's a machine. This got to be the last year for these Bruins, like that top line. No, Pasta's just hitting his prime. Marchand's getting better, and Bergeron's hanging tough. All right. They okay. got two more years. Vesna. Vesna. This is a good one. Uh, I would probably say Tristan Jari coming out of nowhere. Hot take. Hot take. Tied with NHL leading wins 13. Leads the league in save percentage. That's, that won't matter because this is coming out two days later. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Thanks. JSB with Mike Johnson, former NHL hockey player. We've had a lot of fun. We wanted to talk so much more. That means you're just going to have to come back, Mike. Mm -hmm. Before we let you go, who's going to win the Stanley Cup? Tampa. This year will be the year. Finally. They need to. Yeah, they're due. This group. They're due. They're playing great right now as well. Mm -hmm. It was so embarrassing last year, but they could win it against who? Vegas, and that's kind of selfish because I'd like a Tampa Vegas final. That'd be fun. Because you get to travel for it, and as a broadcaster, it only it's all matters. All about the road cities. What's, uh, best road city to go to? Nashville. I don't even like country oh, music. Yeah, yeah, lower Broadway, baby. Or New York. New York, and we're in New York right now, and you know what we're going to do? We are going to drink. We're going to bank. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and we will see you next week. Thank you, Mike. Anytime. I'll come back. Watch him on NHL Network, TSN, NBC, SiriusXM. Bottoms up, bitches. <laughs> Non-alcoholic.